Right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good evening to all members. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, today, as far as we're concerned, we are having uh, a continuous general club um, uh, that is organized by Kulia of Dentistry, a cluster of cancer research initiative IIUM, as well as uh, My Somoy. Uh, and um, the title that we have today is on application of uh, bioinformatics in medicine and dentistry. Uh, for me, this is a very important topic, particularly uh, for us to understand the new technology. Bioinformatics are uh, actually not really new, as far as I can say, but the application in dentistry and medicine is very much important. Um, before I brief um, or recall our invited speaker today, uh, doc uh, technologist Dr. Nor Azlan Nor Muhammad, I would like to welcome uh, the Dean of Kuli of Dentistry, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Zainul Ahmad Rajion. Alhamdulillah, thank you very much, Prof, uh, for joining us today. And uh, Prof, uh, I think it would be uh, nice if we can have a um, few words from you, Prof, uh, for our program today. Please proceed, Prof. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Very good afternoon. Uh, first of all, uh, many thanks to our guest speaker, Dr. No Azlan, uh, Head of Center for Bioinformatics Research, uh, Institute of System Biology, University of Malaysia. Malaysia. Uh, I think uh, uh, very important, uh, as mentioned by uh, Dr. Hafiz, uh, the topic for today, uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, I was in the in academic nearly more than 20 years, but I can see uh, bioinformatics is something which is uh, uh, seems to be very significant uh, part of scientific research and application in other parts of the world. Uh, I worked in Saudi in 2015. Uh, when I was there, there's one Malaysian from USM. Uh, she's basically an engineer by training, but she's uh, working in Saudi in one of the university uh, specialization in bioinformatics. So just to tell you that uh, Malaysians is going other parts of the world, just to make sure that other parts of the world understand uh, bioinformatics. So she's working in one of the medical uh, I mean, uh, Institute of Research Science in, in Saudi. So I think uh, when I was in USM, uh, I, I have some experience on uh, those bioinformatics, especially applying uh, computer-based uh, CAT CAM on uh, uh, computer-based design, manufacturing, and also using some uh, applications of uh, uh, ITs in diagnosis of patients based on database. So... Uh, and I attended a few presentations uh, in the conference in other parts of the world. So I think uh, it's high time uh, in KOD uh, or basically in IUM and KOD, uh, we should have some, uh, you know, uh, our lecturers involved in this research, although not many, but I think there's some of you are uh, interested in this area. Uh, I think they are here in this, uh, in this, in this, uh, up in, uh, in this uh, presentation. They are all here, I think, to participate in this, pres in this presentation. So I think, uh, I think I hope Dr. No Azlan can bring us highlight uh, these imp important parts of bioinformatics, especially you know in uh, as, as you know now this drug discovery targeting of uh, patients with uh, like uh, more on the uh, molecular uh, modeling and simulation, and also uh, you know now we have the the term personalized medicine tailored to each patient, preventive medicine, uh, gene therapy. This is part of human genome. Uh, I've been uh, research going on. So I think uh, it's, bad, it's good that we, we are here today. I hope that you can uh, share your knowledge, your expertise with us. So on that note, uh, thank you very much. And thanks again for uh, contributing your time in this presentation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, Zainal, for the very fruitful introduction. Um, before we uh, pass this to uh, Dr. Azlan, let me brief you with his biography. Um, uh, technologist Dr. Noor Azlan uh, currently is the head of Center for Bioinformatics Research, CBR, Institute of System Biology in Biosis, uh, UKM, eh, University of Bangsa in Malaysia. His expertise in bioinformatics and computational systems biology. His research focuses in on the application of omics technologies to unravel new genes and pathways for the development of precision biotechnology. He applies with genomics, transcriptomics, metagenomics, and metatranscriptomics technologies based on short and long reads 
Next Generation Sequencing Platform, NGS. These workflows are then combined with uh, sequence analysis, domain characterization, phylogenetics, pathway reconstruction, and database development to unravel new knowledge from the big biological data. So there's a brief on uh, bioinformatics uh, of what Dr. Aslan will be uh, sharing with us. Just before that, I also would like to, you know, um, uh, to, to introduce you, Dr. Noah Aslan has actually graduated from University of Melbourne um, during his de first degree, uh, continue with the honours at the same university, and then um, immediately uh, without masters, continue to doing the, uh, his PhD at the same university, Melbourne Dental School, uh, under the supervision of Professor Stuart Dashper, uh, who is actually also my uh, supervisor. So we are actually have the same supervisor, uh, same dental school at the University of Melbourne. Um, However, Dr. Aslan uh, worked more on the bioinformatics. So he knows how actually bioinformatics is very much relevant to dentistry. So he's going to share with us some of the input that I believe that many of us here as a dental uh, uh, specialist uh, can take the opportunity uh, from Dr. Aslan because uh, currently we are in the middle, uh, we already have the what we call MOA or RCA, Research Collaboration uh, agreement between uh, between UKM and IUM uh, specifically for the Kuli of Dentistry. And uh, I think without further much ado, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Noor Azlan uh, to uh, give us a thought on the application of bioinformatics in medicine and dental research. Uh, Dr. Noor Azlan, can you proceed? Hi, um, thank you, Dr. Hafiz, uh, Prof. Zainal, for the kind introduction. Um, also, uh, I would like to say thank you. Um, uh, for inviting me uh, to this uh, and giving me this opportunity uh, to share some of my experience uh, in bioinformatics. Um, first of all, I would like to say sorry. Uh, I, I'm under COVID uh, quarantine at the moment, so my voice is a bit weird, uh, <laughs> uh, still recovering. Uh, but um, uh, we will we'll manage uh, today, uh, inshallah. Uh, so, um, so, I proceed with my second slide. It's not moving, right? Oh, uh, no, no. Okay. It's not moving. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I can see it. Um, so during this uh, 40 minutes uh, to an hour, um, I would like to share what uh, I do uh, as a bioinformatician uh, at Invisys specifically. Uh, and um, since I assume uh, most of you all um, I'm not bioinformatician, um, so I would like to describe uh, what is bioinformatics uh, in, in general principle. Um, what are the omics um, that are in um, development, uh, especially in medical or dental research? And what are the enablers for bioinformatics? Um, so what I mean by enablers, uh, basically nowadays, um, everyone who has a laptop can, can do bioinformatics, uh, as long as you um, have the correct knowledge regarding the biological questions uh, as well as um, what do you intend to find uh, in uh, the data that uh, you are able to uh, gather. And lastly, um, just a brief, um, just a brief um, um, uh, study case on how you can develop your own biophotics project uh, from all these uh, publicly available uh, data and tools. So, um, I'm from Invisys, uh, Institute of Biology System, University of Bangsa Malaysia, uh, located in uh, Campus Bangi. Um, so, for those who come around by uh, Selangor, uh, feel free to drop by uh, Bangi uh, and um, uh, let me let me know lah, so I can uh, bring you to my institute. <clears throat> so, in UKM, there's actually uh, 13 institutes and 13 faculties. Um, so the difference between the faculties and the institutes are our um, focus. Uh, basically, the uh, faculties, um, their focus is on the undergraduate studies. Um, so they have uh, hundreds of uh, undergraduate students. Uh, but at the institutes, um, we tend to focus on research. Um, so although um, we are still um, uh, using the DS scheme, uh, but we are called uh, research fellows uh, instead of lecturers uh, at the institute. Uh, and secondly, uh, the difference is uh, we only have our masters and PhD students um, as well as postdocs uh, at the institute. 
uh, because our focus is purely uh, R and D. So let me try and play this video. Is there any sound? Yeah, so what do we still? Uh... Yes or no? Uh, yes, yes. There's sound. Okay. There is a sound. Okay. Good. Sorry for that. <coughs> Ini suatu istilah yang sentiasa dikaitkan dengan kes siasatan forensik dan ia merupakan antara elemen utama dalam penyelidikan biologi moden. Tetapi pernahkah anda terfikir DNA ini adalah merupakan sebahagian daripada data biologi yang memainkan peranan penting dalam perawatan penyakit tumbuh tumbuhan dan boleh membantu mengatasi masalah ekonomi negara? Sehubungan itu, sebuah institut penyelidikan telah diwujudkan di UKM untuk mengkaji dan memanfaatkan bidang yang menghasilkan lambakan data biologi. Ditubuhkan pada tahun 2005, Institut Biologi Sistem yang lebih dikenali dengan InBiosis mengorak langkah mendepani bidang bioteknologi moden di negara ini dengan wawasan utama untuk memantap dan memacu penyelidikan biologi sistem dan biologi sintetik. Imbiosis memacu kajian terkehadapan dari tiga pusat kecemerlangan dengan menggunakan teknik terkini dalam bidang biologi, sains komputer, teknologi maklumat, dan sains data. Imbiosis membawa era baru dalam kajian produk semula jadi negara dengan mengaplikasi teknologi omik dan biologi pengkomputeran untuk memantapkan bidang tutomixiutikal dan data raya biologi dalam menurai pelbagai industri sifat biomolekul yang berpotensi dalam pelbagai industri. Biosis juga mempelopori bidang biologi sintetik dan penyuntingan jenom di negara ini ke arah penyelidikan translasi dan pembangunan bioproduk. Untuk memacu inovasi ke tahap yang lebih tinggi, Biosis turut bekerjasama dengan industri dalam dan luar negara. I have been working closely with Inbiosis since 2015 where we conducted fungal metabolomic We have developed a species metabolite relational database called the MAPSA and also we have developed several modern algorithms for extensive analysis of feed biological data where we have taken all these international products like the pharmaceuticals and the biological studies to make so many things and methods. As one of the first systems biology institutes, I believe that Biosis provides a wide platform as well as that for genomics research, especially for young scientists. Berbekalkan budaya kecemerlangan dan prospek kejaya, Biosis menawarkan program siswazah bertaraf antarabangsa untuk menghasilkan saintis biologi alaf baru. ACB. Kami diberi pendedahan dan latihan dalam biologi sistem dan biologi sintetik. Saya memilih Inbiosis kerana institut ini mempelopori kajian inovatif yang berteknologi tinggi dalam bidang omics di Asia. Inbiosis adalah satu-satunya institusi di Malaysia yang mempunyai kapasiti pemprosesan data biologi yang tinggi. Saya telah mendedahkan berbagai teknik pembangunan yang membolehkan saya menjalankan kajian untuk menjawab soalan-soalan penyelidikan. Saya dapati Imbiosis telah menyelidikan persekitaran, pembelajaran dan pendidikan ekonomi. Imbiosis memberikan peluang untuk kami menjalankan penyelidikan rentas bidang, terutama di dalam bidang bioteknologi dan farmaceutical bagi penghasilan bioproduk. Serta ialah Imbiosis untuk sama-sama mengilham harapan mencipta masa depan dan mencapai visi dan misi UKM.
All right. Um, so that was a brief um, introduction on what we do at Invoices. Um, so as you can see, um, our focus are basically are all the non-human related uh, problems uh, or, or systems. Uh, because at UKM, we have another sister institute, uh, which is called UMBI. Um, so they are focused on the medical, um, they, they, are, they are still doing system strategy, but on, in medicine, in cancer, uh, in uh, NCDs and so on. Uh, so actually we don't have any specific um, dental institute yet at Invoices, uh, but we do have uh, a couple of um, COE, uh, Center of Excellence. So they are uh, small groups in the faculty. Um, so back to my expertise, um, I'm very, very basically focusing on uh, bioinformatics. Uh, so I don't tend to focus on a single system or a single species of interest. Um, so here are some of the things uh, that I've done uh, personally. Um, let me try to find a little bit of point there. Mm. So uh, here are basically some of the uh, metagenomics work uh, that I've done uh, from uh, palm oil samples. Um, and on the right is basically uh, some of the uh, insect uh, transcriptomics that, that I've done. And so these are basically just showing uh, what are the different, different pathways uh, based on the RNA seq data that we have generated. <clears throat> so uh, at the moment, uh, most of my projects are related to palm oil um, related insects. Um, so I focus on insects that are causing problems uh, to the palm oil industry. Um, so the ultimate aim is basically to find uh, new control methods, uh, either biological uh, pestis, uh, biopesticides or um, uh, biological agents uh, that can help uh, control the numbers of, of these problematic insects uh, in the uh, field because uh, they tend to reduce uh, the production of uh, oil palm up to 20% um, each year. So that's uh, basically an impact of uh, millions of ringgit lah, uh, of loss. Um, Apart from that, uh, after processing all of these uh, omics data, um, I try to develop databases. Um, so this is one of the databases that I've uh, developed uh, with Prof Zeti. Um, so actually the data set is from her, uh, her project, um, where she collects uh, over 8,000 uh, PCOS proteins. So PCOS is basically uh, a disease uh, by women. Um, so other databases that uh, I'm developing includes all the insect genomics uh, and everything. Uh, but uh, that is currently still in the pipeline. Um, so next, uh, I'll go into the topic of what is uh, bioinformatics. Um, so uh, basically one of the uh, big players in bioinformatics is called the NCBI, uh, National Center for Bioinformatics Information uh, in the United States. Um, so they have a definition of bioinformatics as the field of science in which biology, computer science, uh, in, and information technology merge in a single discipline. Uh, basically, it came uh, is self-explanatory in the word itself. Uh, it's bioinformatics. Uh, so it's actually, it's the field of informatics, uh, but applied in um, onto bio biological data. Uh, so the difference uh, between uh, informatics and bioinformatics is just the data set. Uh, that we are dealing with. Um, so here are some of the other jargons uh, that involve in uh, the field of bioinformatics. Uh, so we have uh, genomics and proteomics. So these are where part of the data is coming from. Um, so uh, just now I've mentioned about NGS in the video itself, uh, talk about sequencing, omics and everything. So these are basically by biotech technologies, um, what we call as high throughput um, technologies. Um, so for example, in the genomics, uh, we have sequencing, which basically can sequence uh, the entire genome <coughs> of a sample in one go uh, and, and so on. <coughs> so for, for proteomics, uh, it identifies uh, all the proteins uh, in the sample and so on. Um, so from that, we have the, the smaller, smaller niche, more niche kind of uh, field, uh, 
uh, we have uh, immuno and chem informatics, uh, we have modeling, uh, we have people who focus on uh, processing methods and algorithms uh, and so on. Um, so the field of bioinformatics uh, won't uh, boom if without uh, the uh, introduction of uh, DNA sequencing. Um, my problem with the sharing, let me stop the share for a while. Let me go off one of my applications. Sorry, sorry about the technical problem. Okay, let me proceed again. Okay, um, so basically in the late uh, uh, 1990s and the early 2000s, uh, where the significant uh, technology um, came about, which is uh, the sequencing system. Uh, highlighted here in 2005, we have the 454 system. So it becomes the first uh, generation sequencer. Uh, to, to the market. So before uh, these 454 systems, we are able to know what is a gene, but we tend to only able to sequence a single or a couple of genes. Uh, but with the 454 system, uh, we are able to sequence uh, the entire genome. And comes uh, in 2007, uh, which is the solid system. Uh, and now it becomes the Illumina system which is the NGS, the next generation. So 2005 is the first one. Uh, around 2007, 2008 um, is the second generation, which is we call as NGS. And uh, nowadays, we have the third generation sequencing uh, technologies, uh, which are the PEC-Bio uh, as well as Oxford Nanopore. Um, so the difference between the first, second, and third generation is basically the length of the, uh, the reads uh, that the sequencing can do in one go. Um, so for the NGS systems, um, if you go into papers, they talk about 150 dp, 250 dp, right? Uh, base pair. Uh, so that's basically the, the length of the each of the raw reads uh, that are being sequenced by these uh, sequencing uh, machines. Uh, but for the third generation one, for the PEC bio is nowadays is up to 2,000 base pair, uh, and for Oxford Nanopore is already uh, up to 4 million. Um, so basically, if you have a fragment of DNA that's uh, 4 million amino uh, nucleotides in length, uh, it can uh, basically spit out the digital version of that uh, in, in one go. <clears throat> so that's the improvement uh, in technologies uh, because um, the genome itself um, are quite big. Uh, for us uh, humans, I think it's around 3 billion nucleotides. Um, so as you can see, to, 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 for the machine to be able to um, read the entire 3 billion nucleotides, it needs to chop it into small, small fractions. Um, so that's why people uh, <coughs> keep pushing onwards uh, and on developing um, longer reads because we don't have to chop the DNA in the first place. Uh, so we get better, better data and easier processing later on. <coughs> um, Another um, cause of the booming of bioinformatics is the reduction of the sequencing cost. Um, so the first human genome uh, cost about, I think, a few billion dollars. Um, but nowadays, uh, 2020 uh, onwards, <coughs> the price uh, per human genome is already uh, under $1,000. Um, so, uh, due to the reduction of cost, um, these data sets are being generated in a larger scale nowadays. Um, so, I think one of the big <coughs> sequencing projects is the 2 million uh, human genome uh, being uh, conducted by AstraZeneca. Um, so, they are trying to um, sequence 2 million human genomes uh, to basically find new drugs. Uh. 
uh, final drugs because uh, the normal um, drug development pipeline is uh, getting uh, quite slow and saturated. Like we 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 we, we the pace that we are finding new drugs are getting slower and slower. Uh, so basically, they are trying to use uh, genomic uh, and sequencing platforms uh, to overcome this problem. Um, <clears throat> so since the reduction of uh, cost, uh, so here is the time scale of the basically the data. Um, so as you can see here, the data sets are being uh, deposited into this uh, databases uh, at an exponential rate. Uh, so basically, if you see um, here are the expected uh, different, different trajectories. Um, so based on history, uh, every, the data set is being doubled every seven months. Um, so that's quite a big uh, um, data being dumped into the, the the databases. Um, so even uh, I think a few years ago, I went to Singapore. Just one uh, medical institute in Singapore are producing around um, 500 terabytes of data per week. Um, so that's just one institute in Singapore, right? Um, so imagine the overall, uh, <clears throat> the global scale of uh, this data being uh, generated. If you can see here on the right scale here, um, we are familiar with one tera. Right, we have one terabyte laptops, uh, SSD storage, and so on. But here they are talking about uh, Peta, Exa, and Zeta already. Um, so one Peta is basically one million tera, I think. Uh, so you can see that the numbers are keep uh, ballooning up. <coughs> Um, apart from that, um, so that was genomic data, uh, RNA, RNA seq data uh, has the same trend as well uh, because uh, basically for RNA sequencing, uh, it uses the same uh, technology, uh, NGS, uh, third generation sequencing. Uh, the only difference is the sample. So instead of you putting in uh, genomic DNA, you put RNA in uh, as the sample uh, because uh, RNA still consists of uh, nucleotides. So the sequencing machines are able to uh, process that as well. Um, so here we can see, uh, I couldn't find a, 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 a more current uh, statistics, uh, but if, if, you, if the exponential rate is uh, being uh, consistent, uh, so we see that um, uh, we can imagine that uh, the data nowadays are quite huge already. Um, apart from that, um, Proteum Exchange houses the proteomics data. Uh, so we can see the number of data sets being deposited um, just in these seven years uh, are increasing as well. Uh, and on the right there is just uh, the demography and the, some of the species uh, that are producing uh, proteomics data. Um, so in terms of publications, we see a lot of growth as well. Um, so the earlier ones are mostly papers or publications related to genomics. Uh, but uh, since the data is very complex, and nowadays people are looking into multi-omics, uh, which is uh, the second and last one. Um, so multi-omics is basically the overlapping of uh, multiple uh, omics uh, data. So either you overlap uh, transcriptomics with proteomics or genomics with the other, other omics. Uh, you mix and match uh, in uh, basically to try to reduce the noise uh, that you find in these uh, biological systems. Okay, all right. Um, so what's the current trend then? Um, so in medical and dental research, uh, people uh, are now going into single cell already. Um, so as we know, uh, we ourselves uh, have many, many different uh, cell types. Uh, we have the epithelium, the brains, the blood vessels, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> so the problem with uh, applying, um, so in the early days, or, or not early days, uh, at the moment, uh, at Invoices ourselves, uh, at UMBI, at UKM, uh, in Malaysia as general, uh, so people are still um, loading um, bulk tissue samples into these um, sequencing platforms. Um, so the issue with uh, bulk tissue samples is basically you are mixing all the different different cells uh, together. Lah. 
So if you are doing transcriptomics or if you are doing uh, any kind of differential expression uh, experiments, uh, you don't actually know um, which cell types the expression data is coming from. Um, so now people are introducing single cell uh, RNA sequencing. So basically this is single cell transcriptomics. So instead of um, getting the expression values or sequencing the entire tissue, uh, they try to basically get the sample and process the sample first and try to split all the different different cells uh, into basically different different dots on a plate um, and do sequencing on each of those um, cells uh, separately. Um, so the idea is um, you get a better resolution uh, in terms of the expression and as well as the sequencing data. So here, just, just uh, some uh, simple cartoon um, uh, illustration. Um, so on the left side, it's basically the previous way, the non-single cell RNA sequencing. Um, so the different different cells are basically um, are not separated. Lah. Um, so you can see that um, the, hence we cannot trust the expression because we don't know which uh, of the cells uh, they actually contribute to the expression. Uh, but if we in single cell sequencing, um, they try to at least uh, separate the different types. Uh, or But now I've also seen technologies where they are basically separating each of the cell. Uh, and hence, when we get the sequencing data, um, the data is specific. So it's either a, a disease cell or a, a, a cancer cell. So we, that correlation can be obtained nowadays uh, if you do the single cell uh, sequencing uh, platform. So as uh, since the data is much, much more, um, so we are talking about um, 200 um thousand ringgit worth of sequencing in one single sequencing uh, single cell rna seq project um so i think it's about two or three hundred um samples uh because uh we are now uh, doing the sequencing on a cell level so hence the bioinformatics get complicated as well um so part of the bioinformatics is basically under the data processing so instead of you are doing um, the expression counting or whatever throughout a single file, now you have to correlate to how many cells uh, you sequence in the first place. Um, so previously, if we do samples, really uh, in a Malaysian project uh, due to the grant limitation and so on, we tend to do 12 samples, 18 samples uh, around that range, right? Uh, so, but if you go to single cell, uh, even that one single sample already have uh, hundreds of uh, basically samples or expression values uh, due to the different different cells uh, in that sample. Um, so times 10 or 20 samples, uh, so it gets uh, out of proportion quite, quite fast. Um, so, but the data processing part is quite, uh, quite new uh, since single cell sequencing itself is a new platform. Um, so the bioinformatic tools and bioinformatic pipelines are still being developed like, at the moment. Uh, so this is one of the um, I think review paper um, that mentioned this problem uh, as well. Um, so you, although you get more data, uh, but you need to do more processing, you need to be more uh, conservative in terms of your um, assumptions and so on. <coughs> Apart from that, so that was all uh, NGS based uh, single cell. So people are also doing uh, single cell proteomics. Um, so basically, the innovation is in uh, the sample preparation part. So here we can see that uh, the different different cells, for example, in the red ones, uh, being put in the different different plates. Uh, so each of the well. Um, we have a barcode uh, and the MS, uh, the mass spectrometry machines, uh, basically get the peptide at all, uh, peptide fragments information uh, from each of the well plate, uh, well in the plate. Um, so it's quite similar uh, to single cell 
RNA sequencing uh, where the innovation is actually in separating the, the cells in the first place uh, and figuring out what kind of barcodes needs to be added to the sample in order to um, separate the data when, when, when the data is produced later on. Um, so metabolomics is also uh, pushing forward as well. Um, so single cell metabolomics is uh, um, being developed as well. Um, so the four main omics, uh, I would say the three main omics, uh, transcriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics, are uh, currently going into the single cell um, technology. <clears throat> okay, um, so enablers of bioinformatics. Um, so here I want to highlight um, um, what are the uh, available resources uh, in terms of data as well in terms of computing uh, that are available to all of us. Um, so actually, um, any one of us can do uh, bioinformatics projects nowadays. Um, so first is biological uh, databases. Um, so it's basically just a database, uh, but um, the difference between a normal database and a biological database is the, 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 the structure of the database in the first place. Um, so later I show some examples of the biological databases that are available. So biological databases, um, depending on what information they want to show, they have a certain structure. Uh, so that's one feature. Um, so for example, a sequence uh, data database uh, is different into a, uh, is different compared to, for example, a population data or ecology database. Uh, and another thing is um, biological databases are usually cross-reference. Um, so what uh, what's cross-referencing is basically um, a thing, for example, an NCBI database. Uh, the entries in those databases usually have another link into another database uh, outside uh, because uh, um, they, are, they have similar biological uh, meaning. Uh, for example, the same genes or the same proteins. Uh, so the different different databases who has the same, the same set of genes or proteins, they are linked together. So it's easy to go uh, across databases uh, to find your data. <coughs> Um, so one of the biggest one, uh, at least publicly uh, available, uh, is the National Center for Biotechnology Information or NCBI. Uh, so basically any uh, sequencing project, any genomics, transcriptomics project um, that we do before we are able to publish the information, we need to upload the raw data to NCBI. Um, it's not a set requirement, uh, but um, in a paper, usually if you go through an, a, a genomics paper or a transcriptomic paper, they really give you a bio project ID, right? So the only way you want to get that ID is from the NCBI database. Um, so in a way, uh, you need to upload your data if you want to publish uh, your, your results. Huh? <coughs> um, so actually it's part of the uh, National Library of Medicine at NIH, um, so the Ministry of uh, Health in the United States. Um, so, really created in 1988, so just when I'm two years old, um, so over 30 years ago. So, even 30 years ago, people already seen the, the importance of a uh, bioinformatics uh, field. Uh, because uh, during that time, people are start uh, sequencing and people are start uh, having this uh, digital version of biological data. Um, so apart from doing databases, they also do research in computational biology uh, and develop software tools for sequence analysis as well as disseminate bio bio biomedical information. So this is being disseminated by making the databases uh, public. Um, so you can download all the raw reads, uh, all the gene information, protein information uh, at your own uh, will. <coughs> um, so apart from the United States entity, we also have another big entity, which is Amble EBI, uh, the European Bioinformatics Institute. Uh, so this is located uh, near Cambridge uh, in the UK. Uh, so, 
there's a few reasons why UK has its own initiatives. Uh, first is the interesting is the the interesting thing is um, NCBI and ABI syncs their data. So although you upload your data to NCBI, after a while, maybe a few months, your 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 same data set is being uh, copied into the EBI. Uh, so the reason for this is basically they are both in the same consortium. Uh, so the idea is um, they are backing each other up like, in terms of data. Uh, so since the data was so expensive to produce in the first place, uh, they don't want any um, loss of information. Uh, so these two entities basically copies their data from, uh, from both sides, both, both ways. Um, uh, and this is being uh, also copied into Japan as well. So there's three entities they are copying all this uh, genome information, uh, secrecy information, and so on. <clears throat> um, so since biological uh, data is quite uh, diverse, um, so in terms of databases types, uh, it's also very diverse. Uh, so we have uh, enzyme databases. So it's just databases that contains enzymes and their structures. Uh, so one of it is uh, called Brenda, uh, and that's a disease database, uh, OMIM. Um, so maybe for you guys in the dental uh, faculty uh, interested in these disease databases, we have oral disease, we have cancers and so on, right? Um, so you can look for uh, information that have been uh, already uh, deposited in this database uh, freely. Just go to the OMIM database. Uh, some of you guys might be interested in um, drug development, right? Um, so Chemical database uh, is one of the, the uh, database that you can capitalize on uh, because it contains uh, basically all the different different compounds uh, and their structures uh, as well. So you can uh, get their structures, you can create your own, maybe com combine a few um, compounds together and it might be a potent drug later on. Um, then you have microarray database. So one of it is the geo database. You have uh, the taxonomic database. Um, I haven't used Catalog of Life before, but I use uh, NCBI taxonomy. Um, so under NCBI, there are a lot of databases. Um, we have a uh, bibliographic database. So basically, this is a database of articles and journals and so on. Um, so you've known uh, WOS, right? Uh, World of Science, uh, you know, Scopus. So PubMed is another um, library of uh, publications as well. Uh, so the difference is, is this is under NCBI, so it's not for profit, it's not for business or whatever. So it's just a freely publicly available um, um, article database that you can search for. Then you have sequence databases such as GenBank, DDBJ, and so on. Um, structure database, metabolic database, as well as model organism databases. So, um, most of the model organisms has their own database. So we have a human database, we have a fly base, we have a Arabidopsis database. So for the different different uh, model organisms, uh, flies for insects, we have human, we have mouse, um, we have uh, Arabidopsis for plant and so on. <coughs> okay, um, so this is the homepage for the uh, Jangbang database. So NCBI has a lot of databases. Uh, one of it is GenBank. Um, so if you go to the NCBI homepage, basically here is where you select the different different database. So here I have selected Nucleotide, which is the GenBank database. Uh, PubMed is also in there. Assembly, the genome assembly is there. Proteins are there and so on. Um, so this is the Uniprot database. Um, so Unipro is not under SCBI, it's under EBI. Um, so the people in EBI tend to focus more on proteins. Um, so NCBI focuses, they are focused are more on the, the, the sequencing data. Um, so here in, for example, Unipro, uh, Universal Protein uh, Knowledge Base, um, here we have uh, basically uh, two different subsets in Unipro. Uh. So first we have SwissProt. SwissProt is basically all the proteins that have manually annotated, meaning that um, they have uh, wet lab confirmation of their functions. Uh, so if you click any entry in the SwissProt, 
uh, section of this Uniprod uh, knowledge base, you can find the attached uh, paper that talk about the function of that protein. Uh, so it's not much, it's only around 500,000 proteins uh, compared to the over 63 million proteins that are automatically annotated. So these are obviously using bioinformatics. Lah. So they are using bioinformatics to assign uh, a protein function uh, to proteins that have gathered mostly from um, genome sequencing projects. Uh, then we have another kind of database. This is the protein family. Uh, so just now Unipro is a protein sequence. This is a protein family. Um, so what's a protein family? Protein family is basically a conserved region uh, of the functional part of a protein. Um, so I think with the version now is already 32, I think I uh, have been updated the screenshot. Uh, but here, basically you look for um, domains of protein. So maybe there's a certain domains that uh, you're interested in. So you want to fish out all the proteins that have that domain, you can download the family, then you can do a bioinformatics search to look for the other members uh, of that family, for example. Then we have the PDB, uh, Protein Data Bank. Um, so this is the largest uh, database for uh, macromolecular, stru macromolecular structures. Um, so all the crystallization work, the crystallography work where they figure out the 3D structure of a protein uh, is being deposited in, in this uh, database basically. Okay, so those are basically the some of the databases that we can uh, explore uh, to get uh, data from. And lastly, I just want to highlight um, what uh, the next enabler for bioinformatics is basically uh, the computing power. Um, so this is just a random um, um, compute CPU architecture that I want to highlight. Um, so here I want to show that this is basically a CPU uh, in laptops. So nowadays, um, even laptops already have 16 cores uh, in them. Uh, so this was previously only uh, obtained uh, if you have big workstations, uh, expensive workstations, uh, 50, 60,000 ringgit, and uh, then you can get 16 cores. But nowadays, uh, even a laptop uh, that people use for uh, playing games, uh, people already can get 16 um, uh, CPU cores. Um, so 16 is quite a good uh, number of cores to do bioinformatics with. Um, so it can process uh, transcriptomic data, assembly, and so on. Uh, and uh, due to the the current generation DDR5 memory, uh, the memory uh, capacity is quite big as well. I think it's up to um, 128 gigs for a laptop really nowadays. Um, apart from that, um, there's also a lot of cloud-based resources. Uh, so these uh, online bioinformatics uh, systems uh, basically, they are supercomputers that we can access uh, from our own browser. Um, so here, just one of the platforms uh, that are available for bioinformatics analysis, uh, which is called Galaxy. Um, so um, this is one of the resources uh, that we can use uh, to analyze our uh, different different omics data uh, for your research. <clears throat> All right, um, going on into the last topic. So I have around 10 minutes left. <laughs> um, so how to cook up a bioinformatics project? Uh, so since there are a lot of data available uh, and there's a lot of resources available uh, in terms of uh, the competing resources as well as the different different bioinformatic tools. Um, so most of the bioinformatic tools uh, that are being used in publications are basically open source. Um, so they are being developed by um, researchers, uh, so they don't tend to license their tools. Lah. Um, so you have access to data freely, um, so you don't need to spend a single dime. Then you also have access to the different, different tools. Uh, then where you want to run the tools is either on your own computer or in the cloud computing infrastructure. Um, so the first problem uh, in having your own bioinformatics project is the data mining part. <clears throat> so what data, how to get data, uh, and um, 
how to get a good enough data that can answer your own question. Um, so here I borrow from uh, how people do systematic approach to searching. Uh, so this is a systematic way of searching publications or uh, things related to research. Uh, but there are a few, um, the overall workflow can be also applied to uh, data mining. Um, so first you need to identify a question. Uh, then figure out whether those questions can be answered. Um, by data in a database that you have chosen. Uh, then you basically reiterate uh, that uh, process uh, until you get everything. Um, so the example just now I showed uh, PCOS base, right? Um, so the difference between PCOS base and another PCOS database before that is the amount of proteins that uh, Prof. ZT have identified. So she identified over 8,000 compared to, I think it's only around 200 for the previous database. So she expanded the data set quite extensively. Um, so by using this systematic searching, uh, so figure out all the uh, different different terms that are used for PCOS, what are the different different proteins, uh, and keep reiterating until they find all the different different proteins uh, that are related to the disease. Um, another simple way of uh, getting data set is just by using a database searching. Um, so for example, this is the SRA database from uh, NCBI. Uh, so if you go to the NCBI database, just Google for NCBI, then go to the login page. So on the top there, uh, as I mentioned just now, you can select down, right? So just now it was nucleotide, now it's SRA. Um, so SRA database is the sequence read archive. Uh, it's basically all the raw reads uh, being generated uh, from all the different, different sequencing projects. Um, so here I just use a simple keyword, uh, periodontitis. So it was my PhD project uh, many years ago. Uh, and I filtered the data to only cover RNA data, uh, only PET uh, sequencing. So that's Illumina, there's both pair and single end. So you can look it up at the Illumina um, resources to know the difference. And then I select Illumina platform. Um, so here I just the Homo sapiens. So, so it's excluding all the mice uh, data and so on. So just this simple way of searching, we are, I have already identified 284 samples uh, of data that can be explored uh, in order to uh, uh, do your bioinformatics project. Um, but uh, I suggest you go to click here, the bio project there. So basically what bio project is, uh, is an ID to every project in the uh, data set. Lah. So that's out of the 284 samples, uh, that's basically 46 projects. Um, so if you click that, um, you go to this page, I think. Um, so this is basically the list of the 46 projects. Um, so you can click uh, each of these projects uh, and to know the specifics of, of that uh, project. Uh, once you get onto this page, there's uh, different, different filters on new filters on the left there. So you can have a go at that as well. So uh, here we have uh, there, there's tagging for a metagenome project, a transcriptome project. Then there's a mono isolate, there's multi species, and, and so on. <clears throat> and uh, we have another four minutes, right? Ah, okay. So here is just one of the sample uh, bio project. Um, so this is basically uh, applying uh, vitamin D uh, into some uh, gingival um, um, data, gingival fibroblast. Um, so I go briefly into example. Uh, work that can be done. So if you go with the uh, transcriptome uh, I, I, uh, data set just now, uh, these are some of the things that can be uh, analyzed or can be done. Um, so the, the, you can basically the value experiment part is settled because you downloaded it from somewhere. Uh, you just do the bioinformatics part, um, you calculate all the gene expression, figure out the pathway, gene ontology and so on. And this can be done in uh, the cloud systems. 
Uh, and here are some of the things that can be identified. So this is uh, the different, different differentially expressed genes. Um, so on the left are uh, being put in the pentagram. Uh, on the right there, it's being separated based on control and uh, disease-induced uh, uh, systems or, or cell culture. Um, so on, so it's clearly, clearly separated between the uh, disease and the control ones. So once you get that, here are some of the analysis that can be done. So if you do enrichment, you know which uh, uh, of the highly enriched pathways. So here is TNF, I think it's tumor something coffee. So it's related to uh, uh, cancer or problem of the oral. Um, and here is you do a co-expression cool analysis where you find clusters based on the different, different expression. Um, so basically there's an algorithm which are able to calculate uh, the expression of each of the genes and put the genes that have similar expressions in a single cluster. So here they identified three clusters for this analysis. Uh, apart from that, we can also get uh, the protein structure data. Um, so if we search for P. gingivalis uh, structures, there's already 24,000 structures available. Um, so once we get that, uh, once we download this structure, we can do one of these maybe inhibitor screening pipeline. Um, so to find uh, new ways of disrupting uh, proteins in P. gingivalis. Um, so this is some of my previous work, but bit, but this is in insects. Um, so basically from the structure, we can do high throughput uh, uh, inhibitor screening. Uh, to figure out the best inhibitor that we disrupt the function of uh, a protein you are, you are analyzing. Um, so here on the left is uh, the different, different confirmations of that said protein. Uh, on the right, uh, uh, my previous student identified the binding site uh, for protein of interest. And lastly here is the interaction, the best uh, compound that we found here. Uh, how it interacts with the binding region uh, of the uh, uh, enzyme that being uh, being analyzed. Uh, and in terms of um, tools, um, so go uh, search for Galaxy Project. Uh, so you can do uh, a lot of uh, bioinformatics uh, analysis. Uh, there's over 8,000 tools. There's already over 10,000 publications that uses uh, some of the tools uh, in this uh, system. Uh, and there's a lot of tutorials. You just search for Galaxy training. Uh, so that's basically a training for each of the bioinformatics analysis for either assembly, for transatomics uh, work, or atomics work, and so on. And the homepage, uh, you can download the whole software yourself if you want to run it on your own laptop. Uh, just go to galaxyproject.org. And here is the interface, so it's a web-based uh, interface. Uh, you search uh, your tools that you want to run on the left. Uh, so here are some of the assembly tools uh, that are available in the Galaxy system. Okay, um, so that's all I have for today. Uh, I hope uh, that was beneficial uh, and give a kickstart uh, for you guys in uh, IEM content uh, in terms of uh, whether you get uh, whether there's a possibility of developing a bioinformatics project, uh, either for your master's students or your even we have PhD students uh, that are just using uh, free data uh, nowadays at uh, because the amount of uh, bioinformatics things that we can do is uh, very extensive nowadays. Um, so there are thousands of tools, thousands of analyses. Uh, that can be done uh, and uh, this data was generated with a huge cost so we should uh, take advantage of them uh, in finding new knowledge uh, from them. So I pass back to Dr. Hafiz. Okay, thank you very much uh, Azlan, Dr. Azlan for the uh, what I call presentation. So I hope that uh, this is going to be um, what I call uh, introduction to all the members um, you know, to begin with the new a kind of research, you know, to embark in the research of bioinformatics linked with medical and as well as uh, in dentistry. So I can see that um, um, one of the, uh, what I call increasing um, in terms of data is on the microbiomics. So in other words, we can also, as far as I can say that uh, this uh, information can actually help us, particularly in identifying certain diseases. 
by looking into the you know the uh, how much is the microbes in certain uh, area uh, and then um, people has also been discovered that um, different uh, disease will have different um, composition of microbes and different uh, what are called the markers so i think that is another thing that we can explore uh, by understanding uh, bioinformatics uh, yeah i know it is um, maybe uh, i'm not saying it's too late for us um, to explore in bioinformatics but uh, I would like to encourage, especially we have what I call our postgraduate student, eh? um, like um, we have here, uh, one Nur Hazira, uh, we have and many others actually um, doing masters and PhD, uh, listening to this uh, talk, and hopefully we can take this opportunity to collaborate with, inshallah, with in biosis. At the same time, uh, maybe we can think about of uh, applying grants together. Um, I hope that is possible. So hopefully we can embark into a new technology. Uh, I know it's a bit jargon uh, to listen to many, many of the words uh, like proteomics, omics, and so on. But let us make it something that, uh, you know, uh, for us to learn uh, new things and to explore, inshallah, in the near future. So I thank you very much, everyone, for uh, being with us for the past one hour. Thank you, Prof. Zainal, um, the Dean of College of Dentistry, for supporting uh, for the introduction, as well as Dr. Noor Azlan, um, for giving us um, the introduction uh, the brief idea on how we can use bioinformatics in dentistry as well as a medical and also to my somoy uh, and hor of uh, um Kuli of dentistry dr azlini associate professor dr azlini for the support um, for this activity today and last but not least to the member of uh, cochri a cluster of cancer research initiative iium uh, for all your participation so with that uh, let us end our discussion see you inshallah in the next future assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening bye